analyze the data on the graph. And we have to look at who is Evie, who is Joyla, and how can we tell? Yes, we just answered. So, who is Evie, who is Joyla? How can we tell? We just figured out. Oh, we start to go home. I think she said it's her home. Okay, back to. So, what did we just say? Who is Evie and who is Joy? Evie's the friend. Okay. So, what data is representing Evie on the graph? What did we say she was? Yes, Joyla is the one with the dog. So which one is Evie again? The circles. The circles on the graph represent Evie. Why? How did we know that? What about the circles? Let us kind of know that that one was Evie. What did we say? What about the circles made us realize that it was Evie? What about what the circles were doing? Did us realize that's Evie? What do we say? Okay. Because they were coming back from the end of the race, right? They're coming downward. That's what the coming downward means. Okay. What represented Joyla, the dogs? Joyla and the dogs are the, what did we say? Which ones were Joyla and the dogs? Which shape? The triangles, yeah. Why did we say that? I'm going to fix it in a second. From the start of the race. All right. I just have to stretch it. Yeah. From the start of the race, from the beginning. Okay. So now let's go look up here. We're going to use our line tool. The shapes line tool, and we're going to draw in each one's line. All right, we're going to draw in each one's line. So we're starting with Joyla. She started at the beginning, we know, and her line's going. Well, we just got to keep her going because they usually go at a reasonably consistent pace. She might have taken a little break right here, which took a little less or a little more. Okay, and then I'm going to go do Evie in a different color. So that I can tell the difference between Joyla and Evie. I'm gonna pick red for her. And she's coming from Fairbanks. She's coming from Melanie. Ah, that went crazy out of control. And we are trying as much as possible to make the lines match up with all the points. But I understand that this third one for Joyla was a little off. Okay. 
So this is telling me where they're going to meet. Okay, this is telling me where they're going to meet. They're going to meet where the two lines cross. Obviously, that's where they meet. Where the two lines cross. Okay. So I'm going to scroll it back down a minute. We need to look at when, that's the time, when did they meet? Okay. So what is the coordinate? Now it is going to be an estimate because we know it's not a perfect linear situation. We already can see with Joyla's that um, she is it isn't perfectly linear. So when are we thinking they meet? When? When do we think they're meeting? What time is that? Remember, this is time in hours since she left. How long into the journey? What time? I see a couple people that need to get those cameras fixed, please. About 90 hours into the trip. So if this is 80 hours and this one's 100 hours, the one in between would be 90. So I don't think it's 90. I think it's something in between 90 and 100. What do we think then? What might be a better choice? Mm -hmm, possibly 95 hours. So we think it's at 95 hours. Now we're going to go over. We're going to go over and we're going to see about how far into the race they were. So this is 400, this line. And this one's 500. So what's the one in between? So if this one's 400 and this line's 500, how much is the line in between them going to be? Four fifty. But again, we notice this is a little, it's kind of in the middle between 450 and 500, which is why Brian was guessing 475. Okay. Oops. So 95 hours and 475 miles from the start is when we think it, they met. Okay, so text box. Easy, met up with Joyla about 95 hours into the race, right? 95 hours into the race, that's when. At about 475 miles from Fairbanks. So they told us Fairbanks is the start of the race. And if you look at that Y axis, it says miles from Fairbanks. Unfortunately, I cannot because if I zoom in, I don't have any of the other stuff. Okay, that's why I'm saying it out loud too. That's why I'm saying it out loud too. So Evie met with Joy, met up with Joyla about 95 hours into the race, at about 475 miles from Fairbanks is what we're figuring. In order to fit the words, I had to make them smaller. Okay, 
So now we got to look at something else. How many checkpoints altogether do we have? So let's go click on this little link. How do you know? It is a decimal effectivity of the same sign itself. All right. We've already answered the first couple parts, but let's go and see. Let's go see if we are close. So this is how decimals works. Can you guys click on it and make the decimals open? Okay, good. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to add in the lines. I've got to remember how to add in the lines. Because this is my start line. And I want to do this line connector thing so that it just does really good on our other thing. Tools, no. I was hoping it had the cute little features that let you go ahead and you know, add lines in and make it easier. But we could look at the different table of values, okay? Let's look at the different table of values. One way that you can figure out how, how when they're gonna meet is by drawing the lines in. Another way would be to complete the table of value. Now, what time did we say that we thought that they would meet. About how many hours would we say? 95. So if I put 95 in here, and I put 95 in here, this other table, the second person's table, right? And I figured out a little bit what was going on with their timing. What is going on? About how far is she going each hour, the dog one? If she started at, you know, at, 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 at mile 10, that's what this is, she had taken 45 minutes. Okay. At mile 10, she had taken 45 minutes. Um, it had taken her at hour 10. It had taken her, she'd gone 45 miles. So if we were looking at about what our change in y's are on the first graph. What would our change of y's be about? What would our change of y's be for joy left? What's going on from 45 to 150 is how much? Hello. From 45 to 150 is how much? Hundred five. Okay, then we're gonna go from 150 to 210. About how much? So we're looking about what her growth is. It's not perfect, but it'll work. Sixty, okay, from two ten to three twenty five. How much? So we're trying to get an estimate for our flow. One hundred fifteen. Now, if you look from forty five to one fifty, she went twenty hours though. Ten to thirty is twenty, right? So that one hundred and five would be dividing by 20, right? Because remember, it's the change of Y over the change of X. So that's about five and a quarter at miles per hour. If you think about dogs running in the snow with all that weight, that's not too bad. So let's look at the next one. We did 60 hours, no, 60 miles. From 30 to 45, how, how much is that?
15. So if we do the 60 divided by the 15 change of y over change of x, we get about four miles an hour, right? Then we went from 215, 150 to 210. I don't think that's 150 miles. 150, 45 to 150, 150 to, no, correction. 210 to 325 was 115 miles. How far is it from 45 to 65? So again, about five and three quarters miles. So it looks like with the dogs, she's able to go about five miles an hour. Because you know, you've got these dogs and they've got the sled and they've got the weight and they've got the snow and they've got a terrain and all this, okay? So she's going about five miles an hour. Yeah, not perfect, right? Because we're estimating. We're estimating about five miles an hour. How far would she be in 95 hours? About how far would she be? If we're estimating about five miles an hour. Ninety-five miles, ninety-five hours times five miles an hour. <laughs> How far would she be? Use your calculators. 475, which is what we were estimating. Well, that was good. So let's check Evie. This is Evie. The second one is Evie. Okay, because she's coming backwards. Notice her numbers are coming down. So. My first change in Y, she started at 900, she's now at 800. How much change? How far did she go from 900 miles to 800 miles? Negative 100, still a change of 100, right? Okay, how many hours did it take her to do that? 30 to 45, how many hours? How many hours was that from 30 to 45? Fifteen. So if I do the same thing I was doing with Joyla, the change in Y, 100, over the change in X, 15, but it's a negative 100, so our answer is going to be negative. Looks like she's going about six and two-thirds miles an hour. Because snowmobiles, they don't go as fast. Let's check the next one. If she went from 800 miles to 675, she's going down again, right? Down by how much? Down by 125 miles. 45 to 65, though. How far is that? Twenty. So it looks like she's going about six miles an hour about six miles an hour, okay? But remember, she started later. She started at when 30 hours of the race had already gone, all right? So that's why it's taking her longer to get there. She did not start at the same time. So if I do her 95 times six, okay? She's gonna be going a little faster, so she'll catch up to her about here. Because look, doesn't it look like her line's going to hit that? And we thought that we were estimating, so that's not bad. So close that decimal. A little disappointed. I was hoping that it would have that be able to extend the line thing on it. But it didn't. Okay, so we estimated that they would meet at about 95 hours and 475 miles from Fairbanks. Now, it's asking us to, how long was the race? How can you tell? How long was the race and how can you tell? Now, we know that Evie started from the end of the race, right? That's what they told us. Evie started from the end of the race. 
Yes? So that means that if we extend, if we extend Joyla's line, so it goes as long as EV, because this is where the end of the race is. EV started at the end of the race. EV started at the end of the race. So the distance she started from would be the end. So we need to figure out what this ending is. So we need to find out the dots of the end now. We found out the dots when they met so that her friend can cheer her on for the rest of the way. Okay, so what are my dots for the end? About how long? So we go straight down, what's our time? Straight over, what's our distance? How long are we estimating the race is taking? How many hours? Okay, so here is 160, here is 170. Is our line on 170? No, our line's on 180. So 180 hours to go how far? Nine hundred miles. Why is that parentheses in my spot? Okay, now we've got to ask ourselves. Now, for those of you that this is bothering you with the lines in it, you can go to the spill and make it white so they'll show up a little better if you'd like to do that. Go and do the fill with white. If not being able to see the coordinates is bothering you. Okay. Okay. Now, 180 hours. Well, how many hours are in one day? 24. So it doesn't take one day to do this. How many days did it take her to do it? How many hours did it take her? How many days did it take her to do it? If we're saying 180 hours. How many days did it take Joyla to do it if we're estimating 180 hours? Hmm? Seven and a half days. Remember, it's in the winter and there's snow and they have to camp and all that kind of stuff. So if she stayed steady, and never slept, it would be seven and a half days. But we know that they have to sleep. So it looks like it took Joyla 180 hours to go 900 miles. We know this because what did we do to figure that out? We looked where, what did we do? What did we do on our graph? Let's look again, what did we do? Whose line is this blue line? We used, we extended Joyless line and looked to how far Evie's line and compared it with where Evie started, yes. Okay, so we looked at where Joyla's line would be at the distance Evie started from. Now, 
we've already figured it out, but who's actually traveling faster? Joyla or Evie? Who's traveling faster, Joyla or Evie? So which line is actually showing that it's going faster? So it would be a higher, a steeper line. Whose line is going faster, the dogs or the snowmobile? Because didn't we figure that out on Desmo? And one of them had a change of something and another one had a change of something else. The first one was Joyla. She was going about, we said about five miles an hour. And the second one was Evie, and we said she was going about what? About how fast did we say Evie was going? Okay, so EV was going faster because her line is steeper. steeper. And the change in her distance per hour was greater. Six miles per hour. Joyla was five miles per hour. Okay, we had figured that out. And we now know a about how long did it take Joyla to finish the race? What do we say? About how long? How many hours? So this is the miles. Oh, we could just copy and paste this one. Let's just do that. Because we answered both in the same question. Copy this one, paste it down here. And return to a different copy. Okay. Because this was asking how long, that's the 900 miles. And this was asking how long did it take in time and that's the 180 hours. And we had answered both back in that one question and didn't realize it. That it, it took, it looks like it took Joyla 180 hours to go 900 miles. And we know this because we took where Joyla's line would be at the distance that Evie started. and checked the number of hours. Because this one was asking about how many hours. So we do have to add in the comment about that we looked down for, to find the 180. These are actually really badly worded questions. This, is, this should have said, what was the distance of the race and how, what time did it take? Okay, so. It looks like it took Joyla 180 hours to go 900 miles. We know this because we looked at where Joyla's line would be at the distance Evie started from and checked the number of hours.
Okay. Now let's look at the next one, 24. The point where two lines or curves cross is called the point of intersection. Two or more lines or curves is called a system of equations. When you work with data, points of intersection can be meaningful, as you saw in the last problem. On graph paper, graph these two lines on the same set of axes. So we need to graph both of these lines so both lines are on the same graph, just like Evie and Joyla was. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get our table of values to get our graph done, okay? I do not see enough space to do my table of values here, so I'm going to add my page at the bottom. We're gonna make our table of values down at the bottom like we did the other day, which is get the shapes, get the line. There's my X, leave space for work. There's my Y. First spot's always the X. Then we need the equation. So could someone give me the first equation and then I'll go ahead and zoom in once we've got it made. Give me a second. Someone give me the first equation. Y equals what? Someone give me the first equation, please. Okay, thank you. Y equals, go back to here, 3X minus four. Where's that minus one? Minus four. Got it. And then this is going to be the y's. And we do not want to reinvent, so we're going to copy and paste this. Okay, because we need both of them. So you go to select and you go to the box and you highlight the part you want to copy. And then you paste it and move it to where you need it. I need the second equation now, please. Negative 2x plus 6, thank you. Okay, so we have our two table of values. What numbers do we use since we have whole numbers all the time? Whenever we're making a table of values, if it's not a fraction, what five? have I told you to use when they ask you to make a table, when you have to make a table? Which five X's have I told you to use? I told you a specific five to use all the time. What are the five? Give you a hint. What are my five? If the first one's two, what's the next one going to be? No. What are my five X's I'm using all the time? Two, and then what? We're not doing a fraction, we're doing a whole number, and I told you to use these five all the time. We did it last Friday. What five X's do I always want you using if it's not a fraction? What's my next one gonna be? Let's 
this makes me think you guys didn't listen to last Friday's lecture. All the time, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. Unless it's a fraction, all the time, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. Keep it simple. Two positives, two negatives, small numbers, not craziness. The only time we're using something different than two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. So when we have a fraction, because we have to multiply times the bottom so that we don't end up with a mess. Okay, so I'm gonna copy and paste those over because I don't wanna retype them again. Select the box, this stuff right here. I'm gonna copy, I'm gonna paste it, and then I'm gonna move it where I wanna be. But all the time on your table of values, unless you are a fraction, you're doing two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, okay? All the time so that you have a consistent set and you don't have to worry about it and they're not too big of numbers. They're not super crazy, but they'll get us some on both sides, right? So now we have to go take the equation, just the X part, not the Y, take the equation and not that. One second. We don't want you. Nothing personal. We just don't want that. And it's stuck. Of course. Go away. There. That was good. So we want this equation part, this 3x minus 4 part. See if it'll do it this time. Yeah, it did. And we're replacing the X with the two. Because we're replacing the X with what the value of the X was that we said it was over there. No more X's. This is gonna re be a repeated process. So I'm gonna copy and paste it down below to all the steps and then just go change the X's. These don't take very long because you're using copy and paste and then just changing the piece that you need. The second one's a one. The third one's the zero. So all I'm doing right now is just getting it set up. I haven't done any math for it yet. I'm just doing the setup. Replacing the X with the Y, with with the X we say over here. And we're always using two, one, zero, negative one, negative two, unless it's a fraction. Okay, so we have to do our math now. That says three times two, what's that? Three times two. So this says six minus four, so what's the Y gonna be worth? So what's the Y gonna be worth? Two, okay. Next one, do the math. What's it gonna say? What's it gonna say? Do the math, three minus four. So what's the Y gonna be worth? Negative one. Do the math, so what's it gonna say? Zero, take away four. So what's the Y gonna be? Negative three. Someone else other than Janessa? What's it gonna say? You've done a great job, Janessa. Let's let them do a couple. What's it gonna say? Do the math. Three 
what is three times negative one? Negative three. And then it says to subtract four from that. So what are we gonna get? They're the same sign, so we need to add them and keep the sign. So what are we gonna get? Yep, negative seven. Okay. Last one for this side, and we're gonna go do the other side. Three times negative two. What's that? Okay, negative six. And then it says to subtract four. So what are we gonna do? What are we gonna get? Same sign, add them up and keep their sign. Negative 10. Okay, now we need to repeat the process, but we have a new equation. We have a negative two X plus six. So copy that down to the two. Change the two. Change the X to the two, and then copy it down below so that you can go ahead and change those X's to the correct ones, right? So table of values are not scary. They're just copying and pasting a lot and changing little tiny things. The parentheses is the one that's always going to change and it's changing because it's the two X. So when your X changes, the number in your parentheses has to change. Oops, right idea, wrong spot. I have a new X, I have to change my parentheses to what that X is. And last one. Then you go back and do the math of it. So if I'm gonna go back and do the math of this, scroll over. That says two times negative two, what would I get? People other than Lily and Janessa. Two times negative two. What would I get? Negative four, yes. Okay, so this says negative four plus a six. Are those the same sign? Are those the same sign? No, so we do what when they're not the same sign? Subtract and subtract and what? Keep the sign that's on the bigger. So are we gonna be positive or are we gonna be negative? The bigger number had what sign? Positive. So what are we gonna say? Positive what? Positive two, exactly, okay? So that's two. Do our math. Negative two times one is what? Negative two times one is what? Negative two, okay? And then it says two plus six. So what would our y be? Four, mm -hmm. okay. Do our math, negative two times zero. Captain obvious question, right? Zero, but then we're supposed to plus six. So what's our answer? Six, okay. Negative two times negative one, though. So what do we get? Positive two. And then we have to add six. So someone other than Brian, please. Brian, Janessa, and Lily. You guys have done a great job. Others need to join in. Eight.
Okay. Eight. Last one. Do our math. What are we going to say? Negative two times negative two. And then we have to plus six to it. So what's our last number going to be? Okay. Now, we need our list of coordinates so we can go up above. So we're going to make our list. Close this guy up. Okay, so let's look. Remember, when we make our list, it's the X with the Y in parentheses. And I'm actually going to go change all these up over to blue so they match color so that the two colors that are the same can be matched, okay? So we're keeping the colors matched. We always list the X before we list the Y. What would my first coordinate pair be? What would my first coordinate pair be? What's my first X with my first Y? Come on, we gotta get this pairs done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Two comma two. Next one. Next one. One negative one. Yeah. Exactly. Next one. It's okay. I got it. I understood. Next one. Zero, negative four. Other people, please. Two more to go for this one. We have five for the next one. Now, remember, make sure you put it in parentheses or it's not a coordinate, okay? So parentheses, negative one, negative seven. Yes, nice. Okay, last one. Make sure it's in parentheses. It's okay. I'm just saying, you know. Four. And then negative two, negative 10. Now we need to go do the same thing for the other one, right? Are the first number in each pair gonna be the same? Yes. So I'm gonna copy the pair over to here and just go and change the Y's. Because remember, we use the same, two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. Why write those again? We just need to write these Y values in. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm changing these back so they're the same color. You don't have to. You might've done the whole thing in one color, it's okay. Okay, so I just have to change the second number from each pair because I already knew the two, one, zero, negative one, negative two. So I copy and pasted my list from before. Two, two, same thing, right? But one is not with negative one anymore. One is with what? One, what? What's one's partner for this table? One, four, exactly. What's zero's partner for this table? Zero, six. Keep them in coordinates, guys. Okay, what's my next pair gonna say? Make it a coordinate. Negative one, comma, what? So make the coordinate. Yes, negative one, eight. Okay, and then our last one for this table, negative eight, oh no, positive eight. Ooh, almost a number. Negative two, positive 10, right? Okay, so we've got the pairs done. 
Okay, so we're gonna take these pairs and we're gonna move them up above so we can graph them, all right? So whenever you're graphing, actually the part that takes the most time is the table of values, okay? The graphing itself is not a very difficult thing, all right? So I'm gonna put one set up here so I can use it and I'm gonna make it a blue set. And then I'm gonna go come down here and get this other set, but I'm gonna change that set to a red set so that I can tell them apart. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna change you to be a red set. And then I'm gonna copy and paste it up there. And I'm gonna put it here. Does it matter where I put it? No, just that they're both able to be seen. Okay, now I have to zoom out because I have to be able to see the graph. And we have to look at our numbers. Are we going to be able to put all of our dots on the graph? We can't change anything on this graph. Are we going to be able to put all of the dots we just solved onto the graph? No, but we will put as many as we can, right? It looks like we'll have at least. I think three from each set. Yes, about three from each set. The low ones, seven doesn't fit, negative 10 doesn't fit, positive eight doesn't fit, positive 10 doesn't fit, up to six does. Let's go get our dot. I'm gonna do the blue in a blue dot and the reds in a red dot. So two, two, so positive two, positive two. Positive one, negative one, and zero, negative four. And I'm gonna make there's a blue line. And I'm gonna connect, extending all the way to the edge of the graph. And then I gotta go back to where I came and get this last little piece because it's too hard to try and start from edge to edge if you don't have a real ruler and stuff. Don't worry, that's a little kink. We're gonna go get our dots for the other one. And I said, it's red, two, two, one, four, zero, six. And I'm making their line red. This one started right at the edge. It makes it easier for us. Okay. So we have graphed them on the same graph, right? It asks, find the point of intersection of these two lines and label it in XY format. So they want to know what is the address for the, where they're meeting? What would be the pair where both of them have that? What no, what coordinate did they both have on their same table of values? What'd they share? Two, two. Mm -hmm. So we put the two comma two on here. We copy the other two coordinates we could do for the red and put it on here. We copied the couple coordinates that the blue could do. We don't need the two, two again, because they share it. Let's make sure it's blue. Okay. As long as you've done that, when you go to write your answer for part A, it's easy. The point of intersection is at two, two. No big deal. And then I want this to be bigger now that I'm not in the I did arrive race. Okay. Now, 
what is the significance of the point for the two rules in part A? So let's look at two rules in part A. Okay, so why is this point important? What is that telling us? What is that telling us about these two lines? Okay, so if the two lines meet, what's happening? Remember, sometimes our equations stand for life situations, right? Like the idea around dog race and where they met told the time and the distance when the friend met up with the dog team. So it had a specific instance. So when we have points of intersection, points of intersection tell us when the rules are equal, okay? So points of intersection points of intersection tell us when the rules are equal, okay? And that's important because what if these rules were about the cost of a t-shirt and a club has to go ahead and buy a certain number of t-shirts with a certain amount of money and which, which company is a better deal for them and stuff, okay? So points of intersection tell us when the rules are equal. Okay. And we are not doing number 25. 